guys, this episode is really exciting. Last week, version two of Stimulus.js was released. So we're gonna be talking about the new values in CSS classes APIs. They've been around for almost two years now and they're finally merged. Now the rest of this is um, some small features and bug fixes and one change that takes data target and renames it to data controller name target so that it organizes those data attributes a little bit better for your targets. Now we'll probably also see the same thing for data action as well, but that wasn't done. And so it seems a little bit inconsistent at the moment, but keep an eye out because version 2.1 might make that change. So let's dive into actually using the new APIs in our example here, which is gonna be a Twitter form where we'll keep track of the number of characters you've added in your tweet so that if you go over 140, we can let you know and uh, display a red message that you're over your character limit. So first things first, make sure that Webpacker's in your gem file and that you've run Rails Webpacker install to install Webpacker itself. I already have that done um, and we just need to run Rails Webpacker install stimulus now. So um, this is gonna install Stimulus version two automatically for you. If you already have Stimulus in your Rails application, you can simply open up your package.json and go down to your Stimulus line and change that from version two or version one to version two and then run yarn install and you'll be good to go. Now I have right here uh, a hello controller that came with the Stimulus install and I've renamed it to tweet controller and that's all that I've done. So we're gonna delete hello controller, you can rename it, um, but I've already done that. So let's wire up this stimulus JavaScript to some HTML. So our HTML is the post form and we need to say data controller tweet here to connect it to the tweet JavaScript controller uh, for stimulus. So if we do that, um, that's going to wire up correctly, but we also defined a target in here. So stimulus is going to complain if you do not have your target in your HTML. So let's go do that before we get too far along. So anywhere inside of this data controller, we need to define a tweet output target. So what I'm gonna do is underneath the text area, say data tweet, target equals output. So tweet is the name of my controller. This is kebab case, so with hyphens in between, if you have multiple words. And then output here is in camel case, and uh, it's just a single word, so we don't have anything fancy there. So we're gonna make this empty, but JavaScript will connect, and then it will set the text content of that div to hello stimulus. So now if we refresh our page, we should be all wired up and good to go. Perfect. So now let's talk about the static uh, values from the new values API. This is a JavaScript object where you will define the names of your values, for example, character count and their type. So we'll say number. So we want our form to include that information. And for values, you need to put them um, up here on your data controller. So we will say tweet character count, and this will convert that all to hyphenation uh, data tweet character count because the Rails helpers work that way. And we also need to make sure we specify value at the end so it knows that this is value. And we can specify 140 here. And actually, if we go into our connect event and we console.log this.character count value, we will see that that is actually parsed from a string in the HTML into an integer. And we know it's an integer because in Chrome, that integer is printed out in blue. And if it was a string, it would be printed out in black. So we know that it's actually not just a string. So that is great. And we can use that to keep track of our text areas um, uh, character count. So what we'll do here is we'll add a data target to this, but we want it to be tweet target, and we'll say field, and we can add field to our targets, and then we can use this um, code here to replace hello stimulus with 
whatever number of characters. So we'll say let length equals this dot field target that will grab this field. Then we can say dot value dot length, which will get us that. And then we can insert length into the string if we change it to use backticks instead of single quotes. So the backticks will allow us to interpolate the length into that string, and then it will set it as the content there. So now let's try this out, but we will see that I'm missing a curly brace, but really what's going to happen here is it's going to create the string of zero characters, but nothing's gonna happen when we type. So now we need to add an action to that field, and we'll say data action, key up, we want to call the tweet controller and the change method. So we'll define a change method. In fact, we'll just rename that. And then on connect, we want to call this.change so that we can print out that value right away. And then every time you press and let up on a key on the keyboard, you will call the change event, which will run this code and update that text. So now let's try it. And we will see that this keeps up with our text and our typing. Awesome. So now what we should do is grab the value for the character count and see if our text is longer than that or not. So here we can say if length is greater than the character count value, we want to add some uh, styling to our tweet target. So we will say this dot output target dot add or dot class list dot add. Um, and we can say text danger because I have bootstrap. Um, that should make it so that when we type in here and we're over that character limit, it will turn it to red, which is great. But if we delete characters, it's not going to undo that. So we need to uh, do our else as well. And we can change this to, or just remove text danger in that case. So that's gonna be good. We can grab all these, paste a bunch in, and now it's going to go over, and if we remove some, it's gonna turn back to black. This is great, however, we have hard-coded some classes into this. That makes our stimulus controller not very reusable, and it would be really nice to be able to define the classes as a option to pass into the stimulus controller. So similar to having values where we can pass them in, we can also pass in CSS classes. So for CSS classes, we do the exact same thing. We say static classes equals, and we specify them in camel case here. So we might call ours over limit, and we would go add that to our data attributes. So this is data tweet underscore over limit uh, class, and this is text danger and we'll add and remove that over limit class instead of the hard-coded version. So here we will say this dot over limit class in both of the add and removes. And so now if we go and refresh our page and paste in something over the limit, it turns to red and we remove and go underneath the limit and we are at zero and in black. So it's adding and removing that text danger class and we can pass that in as an option. Now, everything here might seem very explicit in naming, but that can be very, very useful for referencing this stuff in your code, especially if you have multiple controllers on the same elements. So this is really all there is to the new changes in StimulusJS version 2.0. This is a more uh, maintenance kind of release. It really enhances and cleans up a lot of the little things that you have to do, but what we will see the big changes coming to are Turbolink 6 and whatever the new magic is when that ships here in the next couple of weeks. And we have Rails 6.1 and Ruby 3.0 shipping 
around Christmas time. So we are in for a lot of changes. And this is just the first taste of some of those. So I'm really excited for this. This is really gonna clean up and simplify a lot of my um, stimulus controllers because of the values and classes API. And I think it will apply the same for a lot of other people who need to pass those arguments in on the data controller level. So that is it for this episode. Take a look at StimulusJS. It really, really saves a lot of time and I love using it. So until the next release of something cool, I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.